Well, hello, everybody. This is Cloud, Cloud's Van Life. Uh, me and Deidre back in Emerald Mound. Uh, for a couple of updates. Uh, other night, we stayed out here. Uh, tried videoing, didn't get anything. I didn't see much need to sit there, put up a video stream of nothing happening. It just wasn't interesting at all. Uh, would have been boring for you. It would have hurt the channel for me. People that took a look at that and said garbage and would have, uh, probably would have left the channel. So, decided to wait. Uh, only thing that really is exciting has happened out here. It's not on video, but night before last, uh, something knocked on the back of the van. There's like five or six wraps. It's dunk, dunk, dunk. Get out, the bright light, check it out. Couldn't find anything. Got back in the van about three hours later. Got ready to go to sleep. And something tapped on the back right cargo door on the van right by the side where I sleep at. It knocked six times again. And once again, got out and looked. Uh, nothing. I know that that uh, the rhythm to that knock is they went in garbage on the way, like have food garbage in a bag or anything out. So I can't see how that would have drew anything in to come knocking on the van. I uh, just don't see that. And six knocks each time. That's a, too coincidental. I don't think. Armadillas or possums or anything like that have been scratching their dang head like a dog scratching fleas have been knocking on the van. I don't see it. Uh, I think it was something paranormal. But I say they see nothing. Uh, hopefully we do this live stream here tonight. Maybe we might get something on here. Uh, Did sit there and do a cookout video on my post there for all uh, have try to have up tomorrow. I've got two more videos to post out. Um uh, uh, got like four or five more days. We're leaving Mississippi, going to Louisiana for a minute. Uh from Miss from Louisiana, talking with uh Jason Bouchard about meeting up in Chattanooga, Tennessee. To go to an old hospital, war, Civil War hospital, to do an investigation there. Uh, we're making a curly cue going off around there to Chattanooga. And, uh, from Chattanooga, we're going to catch up with Jennifer in Alabama. And from Alabama off to Kentucky, we're going to go. It's going to take a little time. We're on a limited budget. Uh, pay it our way as we go. Uh, You hang tight, stay with us. Uh, ain't gonna get better. We will be out there in Arkansas, uh, looking for a Boggy Creek monster. Uh, before we get to Arkansas, we're gonna be in Kentucky looking for LBL monster. There's a lot of cemeteries up there and around LBL. Uh, we gotta sneak over to Bobby Mackey's. And do some videoing from the outside of Bobby Mackey's. Uh, see if there's anything outside to look at. That might be fun. Might get something. Hopefully, we can be able to, get to go in Bobby Mackey's and do something. We'll have to check and see all the pricing on that. The last I heard was... To go at Bobby Mackey's, we do a three-hour investigation of six hundred dollars. Uh, not sure how reliable that is. I heard that from word of mouth. I'd rather talk to uh, people at Bobby Mackey's and find out. But. Uh, 
but after a lot of thinking about it, I believe what I'm going to start doing is, uh, I'm going to start doing a live stream, 8 o'clock p.m. every night. I was thinking about doing 10 o'clock every night. I may change my mind on it. Uh, 8 p.m. every night. Uh, my time, it's uh, 8 o'clock p.m. right now. 8.02 if you want to be technical about it. But uh, <laughs> let's start doing a live stream when possible. Um, 8 o'clock every night. Uh, some nights might not be able to because I'm running off of a Verizon hot spot, a jetpack hot spot. What happened, Jason? How you doing, bro? What's happening, bro? Uh, we in a bad spot where I can't get a uh, Wi-Fi. I can't do live streams. Uh, one of the reasons why I've been more active at night on the uh, live streaming. That's where we're parking in the daytime down the Natchez Trace. We get one uh, piece, well, uh, like a, a third of a bar of cell phone service. Cell phones don't even work. <laughs> Not for now, wife. Not for Wi-Fi for surfing the web. But um, how you doing there, Jason? And I just want to go back to old school and do it using doing camera work, Jason. Hey, found a new place to park up at. It's free. It's a boat landing over Vidalia, Louisiana. Downside is right out in the sun and off the river. I air conditioned a cool van off pretty good, but they're going to be running that generator like crazy sitting there trying to keep that AC going in the daytime. Uh, I'm thinking about going over there uh, to that boat landed on the other side of the Mississippi River, put my drone up there and do an aerial shot and fly it across the Mississippi River. Over where some woods at is, uh, look like an old deserted building over there. If I could get the drone over it without crashing, maybe I could figure out how to get to where this building is. Yeah. Yeah, I'm on, uh, Twitter. It's, uh, Clowns Media, Clown Media. I've got the link on it on my YouTube page. But yeah, me and uh, Deidre's definitely interested. Where you at, sugar? Want to get here? Come on. We're, def we're definitely interested. Yeah, that Radisson Reed house is sounding good. Sugar! Right here beside you. Oh. We got. Yet? Come on. Hey. You said there's a silver ballroom in there, um, Jason? Hey, that sounds like one of those, something from like one of those old haunted movies. Yeah, I want a barbecue so bad today. Sitting there hungry. Deidre bought back a barbecue grill. Without the instruction book, I had that barbecue kit put together in about 12 minutes. Set an all-time record. Deidre watched me do, put it together. I told her I was letting my stomach grumbles be my guide. <laughs> what happened, Mr. Vingman? <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a cool uh, video to get that uh, drone up across the river. I don't want to be too one-sided with the channel. Uh, I'm wanting to try to put, put some drone videos in, some spirit uh, box sessions, uh, some cryptid hunts. I was out there showing Deidre today off the Natchez Trace some highly questionably placed broken trees that went no corresponding tree stumps. Where stuff where they've been pushed through in between other trees. I'm about to get some pictures of that and post it on Instagram. Because I don't see how you can have a tree with two trunks like this. And have it have about a 40 foot tree. Up about this kind of diameter. And they broke it out the ground. And no stump. 
and then the tree put through like this. That's a good sized tree. What the freak put a tree through the trunks of, of a of a double tree like that? There's several of them like that in there. I'm not saying it was Bigfoot done it. I mean, did see chain of rope marks, and I, but I just don't understand because that would take a pretty good bit of uh, strength to pick up about a, uh, I don't know, 30, 40 foot tall tree to break it, then push it in between twin trunks and to have it sitting like that. And there's one tree that's got two put through there. Hey, second star, what's happening, bro? How you doing? Yep. We are, we are back at the Emerald Mound. Uh, that's about day 13, I think we've been camping out here. About the old, other than something knocking on the van there the night before last, uh, it's been relatively quiet out here. We got two different sets of knocks. It was six knocks a pop. One set was knocked. It was on the back end of the van on the dry uh, passenger side. Got out and checked it out with a light. They went nothing out here, and then about three hours later, I lay down and just about asleep in the back right cargo door where I sleep on the passenger side on the bed. Something knocked on that door six times. And I, you're not going to make me believe that was an animal. They had no way, no animal could have knocked six times. Oh, thank you so much there, Second Star. God bless you. If y'all can, uh, check out Matt's channel. Uh, David Bingman's got a awesome channel. Uh, Jason Bouchard. In short, if you got a little blue wrench there beside your name, don't be bashful. Drop a link to your dad. Hey. Thanks so much, Matt. Hey, Pinky, how you doing? You glad you made it. Hey, what'd you do today, Pinky? Hey, we had a pretty good day, too. How'd your day go, Matt? We hope you had some time off from work, bro. Oh. Today we've had a barbecue, set down the Natchez Trace, uh, found some unusual tree formations. It looked like something had broke trees up out the ground. No tree stump within sight. And the trees have been picked up and set between two, uh, like a single tree, but it made two forks. And the trees have been put through the center like this. Yeah, we're talking about some good-sized trees, bro. Trees up about that big around in diameter. Uh, well, maybe get some peanut butter. Mm. 
A man can make plans for Precious to have puppies. She had heat. Somebody let a damn little butt dog run loose. And that fine little gentleman, I can't say nothing too bad about him, but he bred my Precious. Pretty much their second. Uh, we'll go back tomorrow, and I'm going to get pictures of it. There's several things there, the way uh, trees have been laid out that I find highly questionable. There's one tree. It's got two trees. There's trees through it. And the trees are about, I'm going to say, six, seven feet off the ground. But there's two trees like this. And they put through one to two trees. So you wind up with two trees sticking through. That's how good, Jason. Yep, there, uh, October. I'm fixed to be catch. uh, me and Deidre fixed to be catching up with Jason. Going to an old Civil War hospital. And do a paranormal investigation out there. I'm going, I'm going to second. By the time I spotted it this evening, it really was too late. Let's see. Uh, I kid you not, during the day there was tree knocks. There were four separate tree knocks and three knocks at a time. Hey, you got uh my you got that blue wrench now. Uh, Can't see me. A second. Oh, you got the little blue wrench by your name. You got a YouTube channel, Pinky? Hey, what's happening, Tony? Oh, a mountain lion? <coughs> <coughs> Oh, my dogs should have a fit over a mountain lion. <laughs> yeah, mountain lion can be dangerous. Ah, uh, you're very welcome there, Mr. Second, a.k.a. Mr. Matt. Uh, well, there's about two Z and bugs flying around out here tonight. You just take a deep breath out here under a light and you're liable to smother to death. Or not have to eat the next day. My God. <laughs> and none of them damn bugs taste like peanut butter either. <laughs> oh, okay, Pinky. Well, we're glad you're here, Pinky. Really do appreciate you. You have any comments or suggestions or want to get talk? Well, tell to talk out. We friendly here. We talk about a lot of different topics. By God, uh, check out Mr. Vigman's channel if you can. He runs some live streams too. Oh yeah, David, there today. I think you are. Hey, Juanita. Yeah, David, I was checking out there today. And in New Mexico, they found a series of footprints from an old lake bed that was over 20, that's over between 22 and 23,000 years old. They were made by ancient cavemen. Back when there's still a lot of water and vegetation in uh, New Mexico. They call me crazy, but some of them Bigfoot looking, some of them human looking footprints I was looking at huh, look kind of like Bigfoot footprints. I really have to wonder if uh, possibly there that be a Bigfoot is it something that didn't evolve along with the uh, rest of humanity. Well, but if you do decide you won't be talking there, Pinky. Feel free to pipe in. You're welcome. 
you got that little blue wrench by your name, feel free to drop a drop a link to your channel. You still here, Tony? Hello there, Juanita. That's it. Yeah. Yep. Only two things we try to dodge on this is uh sand trolls. I've had to get with you to find out what you know about sand uh, trolls there a second. Cause I know uh like in Norway and all, there's a lot of material on trolls. I've looked here at um United States and really really seen much on trolls. I find the topic fascinating. To say the least. Hey. Yep. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, Pinky. Oh, the only two things I try to dodge on uh, live streams is try to steer clear of religion and politics. They two always seem to bring down anarchy. Anything but religion, politics, uh, drugs, and sex. Sex, drugs, rock and roll still good, though. Well, what do they look like, second? Yeah, Pinky's cool. Yeah, we, we can talk about rock and roll, but we can't talk about sex, drugs, religion, or politics. That way nobody don't go away being mad. Mm-hmm. <laughs> A very long, long, long time ago, I fooled around, and you're right, Pinky. I agree with you 120%. On my old YouTube channel, I made some comments about uh, religion. Went look the next day, and I'd lost 50 subscribers. Just bam. That's was, what was those WTF moments. <laughs> So what's the deal with uh, trolls there, second? I mean, like height, weight, uh, approximate height, weight. Uh... Come on now. Exactly. Exactly. I don't, I ain't go, I'm not getting into all of that. I mean... I did come close to doing a uh, a YouTube channel on news and cover politics, but I suffer from high blood pressure, and I don't be found dead at the keyboard one day for wanting to choke the living crap out of somebody I figure probably need it, and I could be mistaken. <laughs> Blow it up. So trolls are hulking, massive creatures, hair to skin. They, uh, they're more reptilian. Maybe they something similar to like the uh, lizard man. Or like the reptilians. I'm going to have to check more into this because that definitely is interesting. Uh, oh, I was talking about rock quality. If you like music, check out Jason's channel, bro. Dude, he, he got a lot of heavy guitar um, or, or electric guitar music going on in it. <coughs> <coughs> Damn. They can raise from eight to nine feet and like <clears throat> 500 to 800 pounds. That sounds like something that might give Bigfoot a run for his money.
if I remember right, you told me you had like um, the trolls like living in caves and stuff, right? Oh, uh, second. So they got look like a reptilian then. They hairless. Around eight to nine feet tall and five to eight hundred pounds. Now that's what I was waiting to hear is the lyrics. I kind of got old with uh with me with shares with some of what passed for music. We got people wanting to scream or just too much uh, on the instruments. <laughs> now that's scary. Desert trolls that can blend in with the sun. I mean, do they leave footprints to, uh, similar to Bigfoot? I mean, do they have claws like Dogman? Or... So they hairless, eight to nine feet tall, 500, 800 pounds. Oh, wow. The desert ones have a hump on their back and don't need water. That's why they have like human hands then. Just oversized. Man, that's... Move over. Huh. Bro, that'd be cool to see, Jason. Well, that's that thing that was running and jumping you're talking about, are you, Jason? Human like hands. I thought that was authentic too, Jason. Well, I'd heard a deal about something similar to this. Now that one had red hair. Over uh, nah, that was that was overseas. Oh, yeah, David Vingman is cool. David Vingman knows tons about giants. They can tell you which races was over here first in the United States. Uh, they've got a series of... Um, They've got uh, temples made around in different states across the United States that was carved out of stone, exacting cuts, perfectly made, that you could still go, some of them that you'll still, uh, if you know the right people, could still get into 
there's a line with the stars that goes back. They think it before it, uh, this place was colonized by the Europeans. Hell yeah. Yeah, people from China made it over here. I think it's some of the people out around by them Fiji Islands that made it over here too, David. Vikings was over here. That's just scary. There's the uh, Matt. I'm about to start paying more attention to that little by my little bell, make sure I don't miss nobody's um. Uh, when they put new videos out, uh, sometimes I miss them, but if I'm in a place where I don't get cell service, I can't go online. You're not bothering nobody's, uh, man, this is cool as hell here in this. I'd call myself looking for stuff, uh, up, stuff like this on, um, on Google. I hadn't really found anything other than Norway. Now, that's cool, Jason. Them dire wolves was huge. Them dire wolves got up to the size of my black spike ponies. <laughs> yep. Yeah, yeah, if y'all got uh, that little rinse by your name, drop a link to your channel. Please do. Hey, no, you're not bothering it by boring anybody for a second. Ugh. I'm thinking fire up the generator for the van and get inside. Uh, wow. 20 reports in Canada. That might account for some of the damn people that come up missing out in the woods and they don't find. Because they still around in Alaska. You wouldn't survive an encounter with old Dire Wolf. Dire Wolf would be your bomb end. Yeah, I wish you would, uh, Matt. I'm not lazy, y'all, but uh, running off this hot spot, I have to be real careful of what I do so I don't overtax the, um, this hot spot. It lags too bad. I've been starting from now on, um, 8 o'clock every night, 8 p.m. Central, or 8 p.m. time zone I'm in now. It's 8.31 p.m. now, but I'm going to start at uh, 8 o'clock every night. I'm going to run a little short live stream. I'm not going to do the big monster live streams like I used to. I'm kind of tuning, uh, cutting back on the time for the videos. I'm going to try to keep them down to around 10, 15 minute long videos and see if that'll help a guy. People being interested, wanting to watch videos and instead of looking to see the three or four hour long video and just go, and they're not want to tune in and watch it, you know. I think that might hurt the channel have too long videos. But 
Tell you what, Matt, you passed on some real good information there tonight. We appreciate you so much. Hello, Savage Batman. How you doing? Ooh, welcome to the channel. Oh, second star survival there um, has been giving us a lot of good info on trolls here in the United States. You go back up and follow through the chat there, but they have trolls here in the United States that for some reason or another, they don't talk about very much. I've, it's possible that's what I'd encountered in Alabama. There you go, second. By God. Uh, in Alabama, I was encountering some large creatures. Yeah, I seen one in the dark, and it was so black, it showed up in the tree line. And it had glowing red eyes, and each red eye was up the size of my fist. And it's like it was smart enough to realize you could see the eyes um, glowing in the dark. Because I turned the van to drive in back there and I saw it. You could see the eyes as they tilted when it turned its head down to hide. And I'm not going to lie. I'm sitting here, heads on the steering wheel like this. I saw that big sub bitch in the woods with that big glowing red eyes. And my hand started doing this because I was cutting the wheel. I was spinning that unit around. I left. <laughs> oh, thanks so much, Savage Batman. I'm thinking whoever that was that come up behind the van the other night was playing around in my damn cargo basket. Left some really big footprints where he'd been standing in wet uh, grass after it'd been cut. And I don't think it was being a threat. I think it was curious. The night before, I'd went across the street over by the woods, and I was hearing grumbling sounds and chattering of teeth, almost like a monkey. I was hearing like, a sound. And the voices didn't sound human, but it sounded like he was talking in a language. There was, just from the sounds of it, I'm thinking there were several of them out there. And they was communicating. Now, what they are, I don't know. Couldn't see them. But I wasn't about to go walk off into them woods in the pitch black. I hadn't even been in them in the daytime. I was spotted and seen a big uh, body of water in there. And where you got big bodies of water at, there might be more water you don't know about, complete with a damn alligator to come, um, so you can have the whole collection, the whole set. Yeah, definitely, uh, Matt. While I was down there here at uh, Natchez, I should have took the pictures and didn't. We got down there and I found two bear tracks out there. I took out one print of what I thought might be a, 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 a bit of juvenile Sasquatch. But when I run across that second bear track, that bear track was up as big as the palm of my hand. So I know it was a big one. It might have been a brown bear. But... I saw some indistinct shot tracks, but there was a sign of a baby. It was about that tall, or about that long, but yet they was about that wide. They was almost the same width as they was in length. And it being in sand, I figure if suckers are really heavy, you got a lot of more muscle mass than what a person does. So them walking in that sand was depressing the sand and making it look like they have way wider footprints than what they actually do. But every last one of them footprints was uh, barefoot. 
like one of them, the toes was curved way off. Like if this is the foot, the toes was curved way off to the side. It's almost like it had a deformed foot. Well, they that ain't gonna want to eat old clown here. Them some bitch gonna be talking about. I might. I, there must be something wrong because I taste funny. My God. <laughs> Cloud not going to be on the menu. Uh -uh. That's what had me concerned. It looked me like Bigfoot wasn't worried about the bears because they bear tracks in there and there was bear. It looked like human footprints. But they were like like 11, 12 inch long footprints, like like a size would wear like it's like I wear a size 12, so the footprints was like an approximate length of my feet. <clears throat> That's it. I, I, I try like hell to get away, but uh, but they was wide. <clears throat> That's what I'm worried about out here, Paul. At Emerald Mound, is there's lots of woods around here. Yeah, so I'm really kind of I'm concerned about them bears. Uh, we go by the old rule: if you're out camping and you like eating food, like we've been doing, eating uh, barbecued hot dogs and sausage out here, we locking all that, we locking the damn trash and stuff up in the trunk of Deidre's car. We're not going to have it sitting on the ground. And it being locked up in the trunk of Deidre's car, a bear come around, let him go sniff the damn tin trunk of her car. Don't come sniffing around trying to read my picnic basket up in that van. Uh, and then I'm not keeping any food in it. I got to thinking about it, and I don't want to be keeping anything that smelled good and edible up in that van and Maybe it draw a damn bear down on us. Now, Deidre got kind of spooked this morning about 5 o'clock, y'all. I don't know if she's still online or not. I think she went in the van to go to sleep, but, uh... Uh-huh, you get to cook a good smell of food, you'll draw them in. That's why we went to um, cook over at, uh, been cooking over at that Natchez, uh, over on the scenic trace at that uh, little park area over there. We'll cook over there and try to eat over there and then come back over here to the mound to sleep at night. But yeah, Deidre got spooked there about 5 o'clock this morning. She woke up and said it sounded like an owl in the woods. But, you know, normally the owl's like, who, who, who? Real, real, real short and rapid succession. She said this owl's like, who, who, who? And you know when it done it? When she opened the sliding door on the van. She opened up the door on her side to go uh, get some fresh air and smoke a cigarette. She opened up the door and it was three very delayed owl hoots. I think we got a damn squatch out here watching us. Uh, what I'm thinking. Ain't as strange as me being in Alabama second and listening to wild dogs in the woods for about two weeks in a row. Running through the woods, covering three, four, five miles a night on either side of a, a road. And along with the dogs barking and baying, there's a freaking owl going along with them. 
And I ain't never heard of no owl getting in with a pack of dogs going through the woods all night. That's why I was over at Allen and Rosie's shop there in Op, Alabama. And their son was there working on his truck. Rosie was there, Allen's wife. And it sounded like a bar now, but the sound didn't sound right to me. And Hank turns around and goes, that's a bar now. I said, no, that wasn't. Rosie goes, that was a bar now. And right about then, they stomped his foot down the ground. And whoever it was had a very large foot, and you could hear it tearing through briars and sticks and and, tree, and uh, small tree limbs and stuff. And it was just a few feet over from us in the edge of the woods. So, Y'all go check out Alan and Rosie's adventures. You could ask them. They'll tell you. I wasn't even there one night. They was out uh, there about 9.30 at night. They heard at 9.30 at night, they heard a big tree get dropped. It broke and it broke and it broke and it broke and slammed to the ground. Then they could hear a very large pair of feet stomping the ground through the woods headed out there to come out the clearing in the back. Uh, in front of Alan's uh, body shop. I was at Tom Thumb doing a live stream when that happened. I look up and see Alan and Rosie, and it scared the crap out of them. That's the thing, Jason. Bigfoot can make sounds like coyotes, too. I was over Coffee Coffee County, Alabama. You could Google it. Lots of Bigfoot sightings out there in Coffee County. People having livestock get killed. Something breaking them uh, livestock's necks, going through the stomach, going after the heart, the kidneys, and their um, liver. And I was out there, but I was hearing the coyotes sound off two or three times as it was coming through the woods toward me. I was over at that Satan's church. And it went from the coyote yip to a loud growl. Then from the loud growl, it done that typical, that uh, sound that you hear Bigfoot do, when they do that yip, that real high-pitched yip sound. And it done that, I heard three large things come crashing through the woods, converging on the sound where that thing was at. Oh, you been to that Satan's church? That's one thing, uh, I think it was really, uh, there's a subtle difference in the sounds. But if you have coyotes out running around in packs and hunting, I haven't encountered any, what seemed like any kind of Bigfoot information, uh, like, uh, signs, like vocalizations, tree knocks or anything like that. But after the damn coyotes clear out, though, I have. I think when the coyotes get to yipping and cutting up sometimes, Bigfoot's up in there on them, and they yipping and they telling each other that we need to go to, go to the store or something. You know, let's, get, let's change zip codes. Oh, yeah, Pinky. Bigfoot's scary. I've got my old channel. I got a video up about where I went out there. There's about a 30 or 35 foot tall tree that something pulled it up out the ground, spun it upside down, stuck it into the ground, leaned it into a tree that was standing perfectly straight up and down. There's a tree to the right of it, pushed it and broke it and pushed it over into that tree. So you wound up with an arrow. And I look, that tree that had been pulled up out the ground, I look it over. Yeah, I used to listen to that all the time, Pinky. That's a good show. I look at trees over uh, for marks into the bark, like maybe chains have been used. I thought, well, maybe somebody come out there with a tractor or something, or maybe a logging skidder or something to move them trees around. Uh-uh. 
Nah, you, they wouldn't be no fight to it. Bigfoot would, Bigfoot would deal with you. I mean, real quick. It's just, I don't think Bigfoot normally are aggressive, unless you find things like I like I found there in Coffee County. When you go through there and you start finding all kind of tree limbs that's been stacked in between other trees, and then up about calf high, and you're looking at an impromptu fence. Animals don't make fences out of tr small trees and tree limbs. And if you get to looking at them tree limbs, don't match the trees that they're under. I mean, they come from another area. So something's smart enough to pull them tree limbs down from another area and bring over there to stack up to try not to deforest their um, hiding spot. They smart. I'm gonna go start up my generator. But I'm not. I don't think all Bigfoot are bad or nothing. Uh, I think Bigfoot just don't want to be fooled with. And if you start going into areas that they feel is theirs. And you're going to get an aggressive response. Although there is some um, of them out there, like uh, around in like Falk, Arkansas, what they were calling the Boggy Creek Monster. That Boggy Creek Monster is uh, aggressive. And them things are not to be trifled with. All righty there, second. Matt, we, we appreciate the head out of you. Do uh, hope you have a wonderful night. I've already texted her, Jason, and told her it was okay. Does Coast to Coast still come on, Pinky? All righty, we're going to hit the on switch from a generator. I got a Predator Watt power inverter generator. I'm going to shut my laptop down for a second while I start my generator up. And that's as loud as a predator generator gets, right? There. Oh, okay, on iHeart Radio Station? Cool. All right there, uh, Jason. But y'all, I'm fixing to get for now. A cloud, cloud fan life. We appreciate it and love each and every one of you. Wonderful night. So glad you showed up. Don't know what it means to me. Uh, the only time y'all leave comments on my channel or from the videos, I always go back to answer them. Hey, go back, check the channel out, share the channels out. Oh, I could, uh, here, one second, Pinky. I'll get you a wrench there just in a second, Pinky. Uh, 
Uh, my camera angles changed around. I don't know why. Oh, it's all good, Pinky. It's all good there, buddy. Hey. Got mods now. All right, y'all. Well, I've absolutely got to go. Uh, like I said, I appreciate y'all so much. Y'all leave here to answer it. Uh, help promote your channel out. See, I love y'all to death. Hope y'all have a good evening. God bless each and every one of you.